Hey there everyone and welcome back. We're here doing 30 days of radical acceptance and today is day 15 of 30. And we are using the wonderful manual for teachers in the Course in Miracles book. Um, yesterday we looked at section 21 in the manual for teachers where we talked about uh, the role of words in healing. And yesterday's thought was, my prayers of the heart are always answered. So today, as I'm reading through section 22 and, and noticing a lot of things going on with me, because I've, I've got these symptoms that are obvious, like you can hear the sinus stuff in my, uh, in my head here. And, and, uh, like the, the very last minute in yesterday's video, I sneeze. So it's just so funny to me. So anyway, um, the thought that I have for today, looking at the teaching and thinking about what's been coming in for me from my guides is my forgiveness practice heals me. My forgiveness practice heals me. So I think that's a really good acceptance mantra for the day. And this is one that is actually completely true. But as, as I read through this section 22 today, I realized how we block ourselves, how, how we sort of apply these, these teachings and these principles to some areas of our lives, but there are these places that we keep covered up, protected, hidden, put off to the side, out in the shed, in the way, way back, whatever it is. And we don't apply these principles, which is still keeping us from having that full awareness of love's presence. This love that we're actually in right this second, but we're not allowing ourselves to fully feel. So how are healing and atonement related? I'm going to read through what popped out at me as important and discuss a couple things and then wish you well on your happy day. Healing and atonement are not related. They are identical. There is no order of difficulty in miracles because there are no degrees of atonement. Atonement is the word of God. Accept his word and what remains to make sickness possible. The progress of the teacher of God may be slow or rapid, depending on whether he recognizes the atonement's inclusiveness or for a time excludes some problem areas from it. So that's what I'm talking about. There are certain things in our lives that we are not, whether it's conscious or unconscious, we are not applying these principles to. The teachings we learned in the course from the lessons or any of this other stuff. There are areas that we are purposely not applying it there. We think we are but the ego is very clever and we, we have some deep unconscious internal agreements about I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this, and this, but not that. So being honest with ourselves, that's what's happening. Okay. Uh, in some classes, in some cases, there is a sudden and complete awareness of the perfect applicability of the lesson of atonement to all situations, but that is comparatively rare. So I'm just going to assume for myself that I haven't had that sudden and complete awareness of a darn thing because I've snot coming out of my nose for the past couple of days and this feeling of like, uh, uh, you know, sick feelings. So I'm, I'm a, a teacher of God on this progression uh, path as opposed to the boom, enlightenment, complete awareness. And I think that's great. That is perfect. I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be in my radical acceptance of how I'm evolving, how my consciousness is evolving, how all of these teachings are settling into me. You know, perhaps if I got everything in an instant, my head would explode. Like, like maybe my consciousness, my psyche just, you know, maybe we don't have the capacity to grow that quickly. So it's totally okay that we're on this crawl, walk, run phase with how to apply these teachings, how to live this stuff, okay? And we have learning to do. So I'm learning about self-love and the messages coming up for me around my recent symptoms that I believe I've created is that I can take a nap when I'm not feeling bad. I can actually program rest into my life. Um, even though it seems like I'm living this basically vacation life, which I totally am, my mind is still programming me to be doing and thinking and planning and, you know, and, and I do relax sometimes, but it just doesn't feel like enough. So that's something that I'm learning through forcing myself to be gentle, to be slow, to be connecting with my friends who are geniuses and make these amazing uh, herbal tonics and, and salves. And it's just this creative beauty with, with, 
working with nature, I don't have to be feeling bad to consult my friends about using these wonderful elixirs and, and sharing ideas. So that's something else I think that is being brought to my attention is connect with people about uh, holistic and natural healing products when you're feeling great and like make that great connection even deeper because you've got, you know, like essential oils or, or whatever food you're preparing together that was just picked from a garden that you're taking care of together, whatever the case, having this awareness around, I, I don't have to be in need in order to ask to exchange and share um, with, with these things. Okay, maybe I'm trailing off a little bit too much there, but yeah, we are blocking off some of our areas of healing. It's probably unconscious, but just know that that's happening and start asking, where am I unconsciously blocking my awareness to love's presence? And just wait, something will come. And here comes some good stuff right here. That forgiveness is healing needs to be understood if the teacher of God is to make progress. The idea that a body can be sick is a central concept in the ego's thought system. This thought gives the body autonomy and separates it from the mind and keeps the idea of attack inviolate. Like at any time your body can attack you if we believed in this. If the body could be sick, atonement would be impossible. A body that can order a mind to do as it sees fit could merely take the place of God and prove salvation is impossible. What then is left to heal? The body has become Lord of the mind. How could the mind be returned to the Holy Spirit unless the body is killed? And who would want salvation at such a price? It's good stuff here. When a teacher of God fails to heal, it is because he has forgotten who he is. Another's sickness thus becomes his own. This is when I think things start to quote unquote spread. Another's sickness thus becomes his own. In allowing this to happen, he has identified with another's ego and has thus confused him with a body. In so doing, he has refused to accept the atonement for himself and can hardly offer it to his brother in Christ's name. He will, in fact, be unable to recognize his brother at all, for his father did not create bodies. Ooh, that is a... Ooh. God did not create our bodies. Our consciousness, when we came into this incarnation, all these pre-planning agreements that we had on the spirit side, we created this physical structure. Now, we may be created in God's image, but reading this sentence, I just feel like I should elaborate a little bit, could be really triggering. We are, you know, obviously subordinate in a way to the creator in the sense that we didn't create everything, but we are creators and we did create our bodies to align with the particular scenarios and blueprint of this incarnation that our soul, you know, kind of stamped the approval on. So anyway, when you talk about, you know, any blockages or feelings of disease in your body, we really, I think as Course in Miracles students have to grasp this idea that we absolutely created every bit of it and then get under that to why. Okay, enough. So here's, here's the final piece of advice. Step back now, teacher of God. You have been wrong. Lead not the way, for you have lost it. Turn quickly to your teacher and let yourself be healed. So I think that's, that's the teacher within. That's going inward and saying, what, what is the meaning behind what I've created? We get a little obsessive about the symptoms too, I think. This particular elixir heals the, the lungs and the cough and the headache and whatever. But all of that can, can be a distraction from what the message is, which may not have a lot to do with your nose, even though that's what's dripping. You know what I'm saying? My forgiveness practice heals me. That's the thought that I want to close with today. Definitely read this teaching again and again. This time of year when a lot of people are sick, things are contagious. I don't think so anymore. I don't. I'm, I'm not, I'm not just, I'm not going to go along with that anymore. I'm creating this. And I think I know why. I think I'm getting to why. And that to me is the, the biggest gift that I could be given from these teachings. So I hope that you're feeling it and, and going inward and questioning these things and that you do believe that your forgiveness practice is healing you because that, that is truly the answer. 
the mind, the heart in alignment, focusing on love and inner peace and just feeling this, 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 the pulse of the universe, slowing down enough to just feel the sunshine, notice the energy that's always moving, always living, always vibrant, always around us, always wanting us to be aware of it and to play in it. I mean, we are missing out on so many laughs and, you know, teasing each other and just coming out of our little holes and little basements and and being the nature and being the unconditional love and the benevolent allies with each other that's what we are lots of love to you have a wonderful day and i'll see you tomorrow